Hola. Hola. Last day. Battle number eight. Last day in Spain. Last uh, recording. <sighs> Probably be a quick one today. There's no, uh, no, we didn't do a whole lot today. We walked a lot. Went did our shopping. Mm -hmm. um, but might as well take this time to recap how we felt overall about the trip. Okay. How did you feel overall about the trip? Uh, I think the trip was pretty amazing. Um, it's really loud in here, but um, hopefully you can hear us. Uh, I would absolutely recommend anybody that would want to go out of the country to visit Spain. It is really amazing. It's just a, a whole different world over here is all I can say. Just people are very different. Uh, their life is different. It's just, but it's great. And it's really awesome to see. So what did you think? Yeah, I thought, um, I thought it was a really good trip. I, I liked that we had two completely different trips. Um, the first half was obviously like a beach vacation and the second half was a culture kind of culture shock kind of vacation compared to the beach area. Um, but yeah, it was awesome and uh, I would definitely say if you have a chance to go to Spain, go and see as much as you can see. Um, I think our nine days, it's really only eight if you can travel, but um, I think that was about right. I, I mean, I yeah. could see doing a 10 or a 12 day. Um, I would do it opposite. I would go to Madrid first and I would end with uh, Tormolinos, Malaga, um, because uh, it's very busy and uh, city-like, like, like I, I've said before, here in Madrid. Um, however, when you're here in Madrid, you actually get the true feeling of uh, being in Spain versus the holiday Spain, right. which is a completely different uh, feel, vibe, everything. The people are different. It's here um, in Madrid, it's just, you know, it's people just living their ordinary lives, but in uh, Termolinos and in Malaga, they were on holiday, so it's a different, it's just different. Just like you would be on vacation, just like we were on vacation too. Right. So, um, lots of drinking, wine. <laughs> right. Um, what was your best, what was your favorite part? Of the whole trip? Um, it's hard. In Tormolinos, if I had to break it down, um, the beaches are just beautiful. I mean, I love the sun, so sitting on the beach and just chilling like a villain was super, super fun for me. Um, just, and being in the Mediterranean, it's, it was unbelievable, beautiful. Uh, but here in Madrid, I really loved our cooking class a lot. I loved, loved, loved it. It was so cool. And I love meeting those people and um, that was really awesome. The food in Madrid is way better, is miles better I'd say so too, yeah. than uh, Tormolinos and uh, Malaga. So what was your favorite part? Besides being with Jaffe, of course. My favorite um, in Tormolinos, I, I would agree. I liked um, the just kind of lounging around and being in the Mediterranean and just kind of um, jumping in the waves and just, you know, people watching the wave. I've seen some uh, mothers that had like real little babies in, in the, the ocean yeah. or in the sea yeah. with the waves coming in. It was kind of crazy, but, uh, you know, I'm thinking that's just their life. You know, they know, they know from that small, but, um, but yeah, that was, that was really cool. Um, just the, the whole promenade, all the, the beach activities and the um, shops and the restaurants and the people, and then just sitting on the beach, the whole thing, that was all good. Um, Madrid, I would say, the cooking class obviously was one of the highlights, and I kind of knew going in it would be, um, it's because it, it kind of just kind of jumps you into everyday life, right? And um, you can kind of see, really see how people in Spain live because you're in their house, right? And um, 
they talk about just normal stuff, like you would talk to them if they're your, you know, your friends or whatever. There's a lot of misconceptions about Spain, too. You think that, you know, Spain, not to interrupt you, sorry, no, but uh, um, in Spain or whatever, you, you always think of siestas, siestas, siestas. But in Madrid and in Spain, I want to say, in real Spain, they don't do the siestas. That's kind of a myth. Um, another well, it's not myth, really a myth. It's like they used to. They used to, but it's not something that is common anymore unless you're on holiday. Like Tormelinos, there is definitely siesta. However, um, the other thing that is a misconception about Europe is, <laughs> is the public bathrooms. <laughs> It freaks you out because you hear so many stories about like, oh, there's never any place to go to the bathroom, you know, but that's not true. And it's not a big hole in the ground and you're not going to, you know, it's there may so be places ridiculous. Like that. It's ridiculous though. Right. And I don't want people to come like, oh gosh, I don't want to go there right there. You have to go to the bathroom in the ground or in a hole or whatever. It's not like that. It's the same. It's all the same. Right. Yeah, but anyways, yeah. go ahead. No, I, yeah. That's, that's true in the siesta thing. I think it's since businesses have gone global, like anywhere else, right. you work your eight hours, you get an hour lunch, and that's all you get, you know, kind right. of thing. It isn't like it used to be. But, um, yeah, so my favorite was the cooking class, and also, I would just say, like, going about town, you know, Figuring out the subway and the train and the uh, trains and the buses. buses, all the public transportation. Figuring it all out once you got it down, you know, just kind of going wherever we wanted to go. We never really had a, a destination. We might have one thing in mind, and we would spend all day doing other things. So, um, but yeah, it, it was overall it was a great vacation, and um, I would definitely come back. I would say too that the. Um Airbnbs are are pretty nice. The one that we had in Tormelinos, especially, I just love that one. It was so so super cute, and it was so inexpensive in comparison to what we found for hotels. hotels yeah, and they and you actually get more because it's basically somebody's apartment, so you have everything that you need in, in a kitchen and. Not like we used yeah, it anyways. We should have, but, but we didn't. And most people, I think that's true for most people. They yeah. They feel like, oh, I'll just get groceries and I'll cook and it'll be cheaper. Right. When you're out, especially if you're out seeing things and you're 45 minutes away and it's just as easy to stop at a cafe and have a quick bite. Really? Um, so, but yeah, it's, the place we have here is nice. There's our little, there's some little problems with it um, that we have. But for 68, I think $68 a night for an apartment with a kitchen and a washer and dryer and um, TV and, you know, it's yeah. and a couch, you know, everything. Right. It's like you never get a hotel, you know, and your hotels might be in a better location as far as in Center City or whatever, but we're not far from anything. We're, we're Where you can short take walk a to train the bus, short or walk a bus. to the train, yeah. Right. So, um, so yeah, I would look at Airbnb for sure first. Find something, if you can't, then go to hotels to look. Um, you might have more creature comforts in hotels as far as turn down service and fresh towels and sheets every day. But as far as overall comfort and amenities, it's an apartment, so you're. it seems like you're at home, so. All right, um, the wine is the one of the two kinds of wine they had at the supermercado, <laughs> supermarket. Um, it's Protocolo 2017, which I hear is a really good year for this. Um, <laughs> it is made with organic grapes, it says. And I can tell by smelling it, I haven't tried it yet, but it's not the highest quality, but it's drinkable. I'll try it. This is a this is a, a a shot of cheap wines. This is our thing, cheap wines. Three dollars. Oh, ain't bad actually. I think seven dollars was our most expensive. One. Seven dollars was the most expensive. This one was three dollars and ninety cents. It's not bad. Wine. It's kind of crisp. Yeah, I would say that's a good buy. It's a good steal. Yeah. Well, it was the, it's the year twenty seventeen. Twenty sixteen. 
You might as well throw out the garbage. You cannot get you can't one even, this cheap. You can't get it down. 2016. <laughs> you might as well use it to, for turpentine or something. Anyways, last night in Madrid, last night in Spain, really sad to have yeah, to get back to the real life. Big tomorrow. Um, we'll have to try to figure out how to get rid of jet lag. By the way, jet lag, on the way here, when you're coming this way, um, we slept. You I, tried to we sleep tried to sleep. I don't think we slept enough, but the more you can sleep in the plane, try to get, when you're flying this way, try to get in in the morning here, but try to sleep as much as you can on the plane so when you get here, you're well rested. You can just continue. You'll be your on day. their time, sort of. You, you stay awake as long as you can, and just have a, try to have a normal day. Eat when they eat around here, right? Um, and don't listen to your body as much until day two or day three. Just look, go for, go with what's happening because that way your your body will adjust faster to. The jet lag on the way back. I don't know how it's gonna go. I hear you Nobody have to try to know, stay away. We're gonna be done with this, right? <laughs> well, maybe if we have a lot, if we have enough requests, <laughs> we'll do this daily until people stop listening. I mean, nobody's listening, clamoring and clamoring for us. We'll do this for ourselves because right. really that's what it's for. So, 365 bottles starting tomorrow <laughs> for a whole year. Anyways. Good trip, Jeffy. Yep. Thank Good you. Job.